Hey, so today uh, we're going to install a three-way smart switch. Um, this is a switch I have in the garage. It is one of two. I have one upstairs, and the way a three-way switch works, it really just toggles um, connection points back and forth. And um, if you get the right smart switch, you only need one of these where I'm going to have the smart switch down here, and upstairs will just be the regular switch, and it'll know uh, whether it's on and off. So a few things that you'll need. Obviously, the smart switch. And if you could see on the picture there, it's going to take a little bit different faceplate than I have, which is meant for a square box. So in my case, I'm going to swap it out for a square box. And I have an older house, so you see that I have this metal BX cable. So I am going to use a replace it with a metal box. It doesn't really matter because this actual smart switch doesn't even have a ground on it. The metal portion is grounded through the cable itself, but just to stay consistent, in case we switch it out one day, I want the box to actually be grounded as well. If you have a, a modern cable, like Romex, non-metallic sheathed cable like this, you're gonna get away with um, using a regular plastic box like this. Make sure that you have a headlamp so you can see when you turn the lights actually off. A multimeter to check the voltage and sometimes continuity of a three-way switch will come in handy because I don't trust that when I actually turn off the breaker that it's the correct breaker that's connected um, to this. I will be using a drill so I could actually screw the new box uh, to the wall itself and some type of extension or a long bit so I could actually reach inside the box will be helpful as well and a handheld screwdriver as well. Before you actually get started, you want to make sure that you have a good Wi-Fi signal here. So um, take your phone, make sure that you have either full bars or there's some apps you could actually download to test your Wi-Fi signal. Uh, you could just search Wi-Fi signal meter and download an app and check your signal. I know I have good connection here, so um, I'm going to first go ahead and turn off the power. So the lights that this switch controls are actually off, so that's a good sign. I'm going to start opening this up before I touch any uh, potential live wires. I'm going to check with the multimeter. Um, I do have a couple outlets still on, so I do have some light here, so I may not need the headlamp, but I'm going to keep it handy just in case. Because the box is the ground, I'm going to try to make a complete connection to any of these. And if any of them are live, I will get a voltage rating on there. So they are actually off. And I'll need to figure out which one is the live wire, and which one are the travelers that just go to the other switch. This is some old wiring. So I have a black, a red, and it looks like a white. I'm going to, I think that both of these are travelers. This is power. Here's how I'm going to test that out. I'll switch this to um, continuity. And I should hear a sound when I connect this. There we go. Perfect. And I'm going to check across the switch from here to here. So right now I have a connection there. And I don't there. Yes, no. When I flip the switch, I now have a connection there and not there. So that means that this is my power and these two are my travelers. So really it's just toggling from power back and forth to these two travelers. So the red and the white are my travelers and this is my actual power. Two pretty important tools that I forgot to mention, wire strippers and some near nose pliers. This I'm going to reuse on the new box. Some unexpected tools because this sucker is nailed to the wall. A 
then to pop this out, I'm going to use the top one. I'm just going to use a screwdriver here. It's a little bit easier on a table. Once you get it started, you kind of bend it back and forth, and it'll pop right out. Place this in from the old unit. This screw is at a good point where I could actually tighten it. Pick a spot where I'll have plenty of wire. And then I'll screw it to the wall. Feed my wires back through. Clamp the BX cable into place. And again, this actually acts as the ground. That's why you don't see a bare copper wire as you would in a uh, Romex cable. If you have enough wire, it's easiest just to cut and restrip these cables rather than trying to straighten those out. So I will do that. Strip about three quarters of an inch off each one. And these ancient wires are a little bit oxidized. I'm going to grab some steel wool, just clean them off so it makes a better connection. So here's the three way smart switch. Um, it does have a plastic body, so there's no ground directly attached to it. And the wires are clearly labeled. We have our line, which will go to the power. That's our line. And then we have our travelers, which I put red to red and black to black. It actually doesn't matter. They just toggle back and forth. Um, and then I have a neutral wire. Um, and you'll notice there's no neutral wire in here. What the neutral wire generally does is just return electricity to the circuit. It completes the circuit. You had Romex cable, you would see them in here just tied together and they actually have nothing to do with the switch at all. Um, the reason why I'm not seeing it here, I'm guessing they, um, in the original, the box where the first switch is, they tied them together um, to return the power to the circuit there and didn't waste um, copper wire to come all the way down here. And generally, in general, I should see it, um, but I don't. Um, this switch is asking me to tie this into the neutral. Now, I've never really seen that before. Um, I may or may not need to. I'm gonna see what happens if I do without it. Um, however, neutral and ground are basically the same thing. So if this doesn't work without the neutral wire being tied to a not existent neutral cable, I'm gonna actually attach it to a screw to ground itself out um, to complete the actual circuit and see if that works. So um, let's start with the cables that I actually know. You'll also need some appropriately sized wire nuts. They'll say right on the package what they're rated for based on the gauge of wire. This is 14 gauge wire. This is, I don't know, probably 14 or a little bit less. So as long as it's somewhere between um, one 14 gauge wire and more, it should work. So I will do the line to our line. And when you're going from solid cable to braided cable, which we have here, I'm actually gonna extend that braided cable, cable up a little bit higher because that will squash down when I put the wire nut on. And make sure there are two things, no copper exposed below there. And you wanna be able to tug on these and they don't come out. I'm going to double and triple check that I have no exposed copper wires. They're in there nice and tight. They're not coming out. And then I have all the correct connections, line to line, traveler to traveler, and second traveler to the second traveler. Now, chances are I'm going to have to connect this to ground, um, but I'm gonna test it out before I do that to see if it actually works. Let's turn the power back on. So 
so the power's back on, and so is my light. But I'm not getting an indicator that this actually works. And when I press the button, I'm getting no change on the light that's in here. I'm uh, too scared to touch that to the ground and see if I get a difference. So I'm going to turn the power back off, connect this to the ground, and try again. For this, I'm going to get an additional unpainted screw, strip the wire a little bit longer, wrap it around, and screw it right on top there. I would wrap it around clockwise because that's the way you'll be tightening it and it won't unravel like it would if you're going the opposite way. And you can already see the difference. I have the indicator light blinking. So waiting for something and the switch works right now. Okay, I'm going to turn the power back off, wrap this back up and go through the setup. This particular model, this doesn't even have screws on it, it snaps right in place. So the switch is installed and I installed the software for it. Um, that'll be different for each switch, so follow whatever the manufacturer recommends. And I want to confirm one thing, um, since I had to connect the neutral wire to the actual case, I want to make sure that there's not or I made a mistake somewhere and there's not 120 volts running through all this. So I'm going to take my voltmeter and just touch it to the box and find a suitable ground, which I have another switch up here that's on a completely different circuit uh, that brings it to ground. And um, I don't see any voltage running there or on anything that may be potentially attached to ground. So I'm happy and comfortable touching this now. And that's safe. And you can see that the switch works manually and on the app. Thanks for watching.